Okay, so if you're at the Algebra 1 level, you should be able to solve this equation. Certainly, if you're at the Algebra 2, College Algebra, the most definitely pre-calculus level, you should be able to solve this equation. And this type of equation is called a rational equation. So I'm not going to give you too many hints here. I want to go ahead and give you a full, complete opportunity to solve this equation. If you think you could do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution to this equation in just one second, and then we're going to walk through several steps in order to solve this rational equation. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It really is my true passion to help uh, people learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time with math. Please don't give up hope. Okay, so that's if you get anything out of this video, that's the main message I want to say is don't quit. Okay, because there is a path forward to be successful in math, but you need these three things. One, you got to be willing to work hard. So there are no shortcuts. If you're looking for like an easy way out, uh, you know, stop looking because there is no easy way out. You have to put the effort in to learn math. The second thing you need is encouragement. Okay, you need to kind of uh, be told by someone you trust that, you know what, if you put the work in, you can actually be successful. But the most important thing you need is great math instruction. Nothing is more uh, frustrating than uh, learning from someone or something where you don't understand what's going on. You see, math is a very technical subject and it could be taught in a very technical way. And quite frankly, that's not the best way to teach math. What you need is to learn from someone who will explain things in easy to understand language. That's what I like to do is to teach things so anyone and everyone can get this stuff without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of test that you're getting ready for that has math on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave uh, links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes. A lot of students don't take any notes, okay? You know who takes great math uh, notes? Those students who get great math grades. So if you're not taking good notes right now, start improving immediately, and you'll start seeing the positive benefit of that. But you can use my notes in the meantime if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here we go. We have a nice lovely rational equation here. Anytime uh, you hear that word rational in mathematics, okay, you need to just kind of think of fractions. Now there's a more technical definition of rational numbers, rational expressions, rational equations. But if you're looking at this problem, you're saying, well, where in my uh, algebra course or my math course would I be studying these type of equations? You'd want to be looking for that unit or chapter called rational expressions and or equations. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer to this equation, and there it is. C is equal to 3. All right, so how did you do? Now, if you got this answer, I'm going to have to definitely give you a nice little happy face and A+, plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can celebrate your success with your friends and family about knowing how to do a rational equation. But here is a little bit of a caveat here. So let's suppose you got this C is equal to 3. You got the right answer. But if you didn't do this last step, okay, I may have to downgrade your uh, grade just a little bit, probably give, uh, give you an A minus, maybe even a B plus. I don't like to be, a, uh, you know, a mean math teacher and be like, hey, what are you talking about? I got the right answer, but you, you are going to take points away. Well, you'll see why here in a second. So just because you get the right answer, there is a uh, required last step. Of course, I'm going to explain all that right now. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. So here is our rational equation. And uh, I kind of wrote out some general steps that we uh, want to take in order to solve this equation. So the first thing is we're dealing with fractions here. Now, there's a couple different approaches you can take, but this uh, kind of series of steps here is probably the most direct way to solve uh, most rational equations. Of course, there's, again, you know, different ways you can approach a problem. But 
What we want to do is clear the fractions. So we're dealing with fractions. We want to clear the fractions away. How can we clear fractions in any equation? Easy. We just simply need to multiply that entire uh, equation by the LCD, the lowest common denominator. And of course, to uh, determine the lowest common denominator, we need to look at all the denominators and then we need to figure out what is the LCD and then we need to multiply the entire equation by the LCD. Once you do that, or when you do that, you'll end up with, with an equation without any fractions and then you can solve that remaining equation. But let's go ahead and just actually look at these steps um, just as I described. So the first thing you need to do is to factor the denominators, right? So anytime you're dealing with a rational equation, try to factor all the denominators because that's how you, uh, you need to do that in order to find your LCD. Next is, of course, to find the lowest common denominator. This in and of itself, to find the LCD of rational expressions is a skill that confuses a lot of students. It's a topic that, you know, it's much more involved um, than saying find the LCD of just numbers when you're doing arithmetic problems. So uh, anyways, if you're confused about this, let me uh, actually give you some suggestions. On this level of math, this would be uh, in my Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 courses. If you're taking college algebra or pre-calculus, I have uh, this information in those courses as well. I'll talk about full, uh, full complete instruction with tons of ex uh, solved examples. Okay, so you need to know how to find the LCD. I'll briefly touch on how to do that. Then we're going to take that LCD and we're going to clear the fraction because we're going to take the LCD and multiply it by the problem. Then we're going to solve the remaining equation. And this is this last step that I was talking about. You must check your solution. So whatever you get as a solution from step four, that is a possible answer. Okay, it's not. It doesn't necessarily have to be the um, solution to the original equation. You can have what we call extraneous roots. So this is a big topic, and I can't possibly go into all the little um, uh, kind of sub details of this problem. I just kind of um, uh, did a quick overview for it, but these are the things you need to be thinking about at this level of mathematics. So again, if you solve the equation, you got C is equal to three, but you didn't check that solution, I would, and most math teachers would, take off a few points to remind you that that is not an optional step. All right, so let's go ahead and get going here. So here are, uh, is the equation. So remember, the first step is to factor the denominators here, we got 3c squared minus 6c. I can factor out a greatest common factor of 3c. That would be 3c times c minus 2. Now, if you don't understand how I factor this, then that would be a math emergency. You need to immediately uh, work on your factoring skills. If you are struggling with factoring, you should drop everything and start off just fixing that. Okay? If you can't factor polynomial expressions in algebra, you literally won't be able to uh, probably pass uh, your math course. Okay, You absolutely need to know how to factor. So hopefully you understand that we can factor out a 3c. So it's going to be 3c times c minus 2. Now, if you notice here, I have a 3c here. And I have a c minus 2 right uh, here as a denominator. But notice I put in some uh, grouping symbols here. Now, if I, could, if I have grouping symbols around this c minus 2, it's a good idea to put in some parentheses. It's not written that way. But anytime you see a sum or difference, i.e. Uh, something being added to or subtracted with a variable, get in the habit of putting um, parentheses, around, uh, parentheses around those expressions. It will uh, save you a lot of heartache um, as you work these problems out. Okay, so let's go ahead and build that LCD now. So the first step was, of course, to factor the denominators. And here's the problem with the factors denominators, with the factor denominators. So now we need to determine what is the lowest common denominator. So again, this is a subskill in, in and of itself, but basically what you have to have is all the factors, okay, all the prime factors. So 3C is a prime factor that has to be represented uh, in our LCD. It's, this is going to be a product. The LCD is going to be a product, okay, of all the prime factors. Uh, and the prime factors come from whatever we factored these respective den uh, denominators, right? So 3 is a prime number, C is prime. So this 3C needs to be uh, in our LCD. That's a prime factor. And then uh, actually 3 uh, is a prime factor in and of itself, but the expression 3C is fine. So I have a 3C here, a 3C here. I don't need to write this twice as long as I have one 3C in my 
uh, denominator, that's perfectly fine. And then here I have a C minus two and a C minus two. So that has to be uh, in our LCD as well. So I don't need to write that twice. So it's just C minus two. All right, so three C times C minus two is the LCD. Now there's no uh, need to actually multiply this back in and end up with uh, 3c squared minus 6c. Okay, you don't need to do that. It's always best to leave your LCD factored, and you'll see why when we take this next step. All right, so we uh, figured out the LCD so we can use it to clear the fractions uh, in the equation. So here's my LCD. I kind of had to squeeze it in. And when you're doing rational expressions, you're going to find, uh, for a lot of problems, they're going to be kind of wide on your paper. <laughs> They're going to go, uh, to all, you, you want to start all the way to the left and just use that entire width of the paper. Uh, now, one of the things a lot of students do is they try to save space on your paper. Do not try to save paper. Write out all your steps. And again, when you're dealing with rational uh, equations, it's not uncommon for you to you know, use up the whole width of your paper. So you can kind of see I'm kind of squeezing my LCD in right here. But um, I'm going to write that as 3C uh, times C minus 2 over 1, okay? So anytime I want to uh, think of anything as a fraction, just put it over 1 because I'm multiplying 3C times C minus 2, this LCD times this equation here, and this equation involves fractions. But you need to understand that the LCD is in the numerator, okay? So 3C over uh, C, or 3C times C minus 2, excuse me, over 1 is the same thing as uh, 3C times C minus 2. Okay, so now let's go ahead and multiply. So when I multiply, it's just going to be the distributor property. This times this, this times this, this times this. Let's go ahead and take a look real carefully at uh, the LCD times 19 over 3C minus 2. Well, in this case, these uh, cross cancel, right? The 3C times C minus 2's cross cancel. So that just leaves us with a 19. All right, so hopefully you understand this. And if you don't, then that means, you know, obviously you need to start probably with simpler problems. But let's multiply the LCD times 1 over 3C. What cross cancels the 3C? That leaves us with 1 over C minus 2. Okay, so we have our equal sign here. And now we'll uh, take our LCD and multiply it by this last term right here. So what uh, cross cancels the C minus 2's cross cancel. And that leaves us with 3C being multiplied by 2, which will give us a 6C. Okay, so make sure you really understand this part. I mean, each of the, uh, the steps of this problem is critical, but this is a typical area where students... Um, get confused about is how to you know take this LCD and multiply by each term. Now you could write this thing out. If you can't see how the terms cross cancel this way, then you know you can write this LCD next to each of the terms. But again, you know you need to understand your fractions and all this other basic stuff. This uh, again it would be like an algebra one level, algebra two level problem. All right. So hopefully you have the skills. But again, if you if you're struggling with something saying I don't get this, I don't get that, don't just ignore it. Okay. You need to do something about it. You need to prove the, uh, improve those respective skills. Okay, so now we're down to this equation here. Now this is pretty easy to solve, right? Hopefully it is. It's got 19 is equal to C minus 2 plus 6C. Let's go ahead and solve that nice little uh, uh, lovely linear equation. And when I solve this equation, you can see here, I'm going to end up with my like terms. That's 1C and a 6C. That's 7C. I'll, I'll move this negative 2 over to this side of the equation. That's going to be 21. So now I have 21 is equal to 7C. All right. So when I do uh, divide both sides of the equation by 7, you get C is equal to 3. Okay. So now C is equal to 3 is, in fact, the solution to the equation after I cleared the fractions. Okay. So there's no doubt about uh, C equal uh, 3, okay, uh, being the solution to this equation. There's no need to check. You could check that, but that's not the um, that's not the question, right? So C is equal to 3 is a possible candidate for the solution to the original equation, all right? Now, if you're saying, well, no, we don't really need to check because this answer is going to work out. No, in fact, I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of problems you're going to do on test, quizzes, homework, etc., where you go, you... Um, 
solve the uh, equation after you cleared the, L, uh, the fractions by multiplying by the LCD, and you end up what we what we call an extraneous solution. Okay, that's an extra solution. Just know this. Okay, in algebra, if you multiply both sides of the uh, of an equation with a with uh, an expression that has a variable in it you can introduce what we call extraneous solutions extraneous being extra solutions so you must check that answer so let's go ahead and do that right now so c is equal to three hopefully that is the answer so what do i need to do i need to get that original equation and i need to plug in three everywhere where c's uh, but not that two where c is at and anytime you're plugging in a uh, value for a variable. Always use parentheses so you can see the setup here. So I have 19 over 3 times 3 squared minus 6 times 3. Is, is, we want to see when we do the math on the left-hand side, is that going to be equal to this uh, math on the right-hand side? So you can see how I plugged in 3 everywhere where there was a C. So let's go ahead and simplify that arithmetic right now. All right, so we got 19 over 3 squared is what? That's 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And then 6 times 3, of course, is 18. I'll deal with the rest of this in a second. So 1 over 3 times 3, of course, is 9. 2 over 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay, so let's continue to uh, check to see if this is correct. Let's pick up the problem right here. So I have 19 over 27 minus 18. 27 minus 18 is 9. Okay, so the left-hand side simplified to 19 over 9. And I'm left with this side of the equation right here. Uh, which was, remember, 1 over 9 plus 2 over 1. So let's go ahead and fix this um, uh, fraction problem up. So we want to get the, uh, this lowest common denominator. This is a 9. This is a 1. Let's rewrite this fraction here with a 9 as a denominator. We need to multiply that by 9 and the numerator by 9. So we're going to end up with 18 over 9. Okay, so we have 1 over 9 plus 18 over 9. Again, we're just doing basic fraction stuff. And you can see here... This is going to be pretty awesome because now that I have the same denominator, the lowest common denominator, add the respective numerators, 1 plus 18 is 9. So 9 over 19 is, in fact, equal to 9 over 19. You have verified that solution that uh, C is equal to 3 is not, is not, I repeat, an extraneous solution. So that's a decent amount of work to check uh, the answers, but you must do that, okay? So that's why I'm saying, you know, if you... Let's suppose uh, this particular question was worth 10 points, right? And you said, oh, C is equal to 3, but you didn't do all this ch uh, checking of, you know, you didn't check for extraneous solutions. That's going to tell your teacher that you don't, you may not understand how important that is to the problem solving process. And you didn't do that work. So don't be surprised to get like a 7 out of 10. Uh, or an 8 out of 10, you don't want to be, you know, when you get something wrong on your math test or quizzes, you don't want to be like angry about it. You're like, hmm, you know, God, you're such a mean math teacher. You know, I could, I, I deserve more points. By the way, too, a little tip, okay? Always be a nice student. Always have a good attitude with your teacher and be like, oh, teacher, uh, you know, <laughs> always try to fight for extra points. Go to them after after school and be like, oh, wait a minute. I did understand that, but I just didn't write that down, you know. And maybe they'll give you, instead of 7 out of 10, maybe they'll give you an 8 out of 10. Uh, you just never know. You should always fight for as many points as you possibly can. But more importantly than that, you need to understand the actual uh, process and demonstrate that on these problems. So you can see this is a decent amount of work. And again, I remind you that if you're at that first year algebra level, okay, algebra one, this is a problem that you should be able to do. So uh, if you need additional help with rational equations, I do have a lot more videos on this topic uh, on my YouTube channel. But again, uh, you know, if you're really kind of struggling with this, take a look at my algebra one course or my algebra two course uh, uh, courses. They uh, will really, really help you out. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.